it is important to give some background of uh, the interaction of Sharia with other laws, especially in the Philippines. You have to take note that there are three world legal systems. We have the civil law system, we have the common law system, and we have the Islamic law system. When you speak of the uh, civil law system, you are speaking of Romano-Germanic laws. And these are the laws uh, prevalent in uh, mainland Europe. And it is called a world legal system because uh, all countries that were conquered, invaded by Europe, became part of the family of countries that follow the legal system legal system of, uh, of Europe. The second system is the common law system, which is the system in uh, Great Britain or in England. Uh, it was developed by the Americans and it became Anglo-American legal system. Again, it is a world legal system because wherever where, uh, all countries that were conquered by Britain and by America, they practice this legal system. Then the third is the Sharia legal system or Islamic legal system. And again, it is a world legal system because wherever Islam goes, also the Sharia is brought to these countries. And so here in the Philippines, we also have the Sharia because of the presence of the Muslims in the Philippines. So the Philippines is uh, a beneficiary of the three legal systems. And so for us uh, Filipinos, it is necessary that we must not only be familiar with the civil law system because our, we have the family code and I put the bulk of our legal system is based on the civil code because of the Spanish uh, heritage that we had. We have also our political system which is based on uh, the American, Anglo-American legal system, but we also have what we need to study about the Sharia because of the presence of the Muslims. There, there was already as early as, the, as early as 1976 the code of Muslim personal laws, which was passed through uh, presidential decree in 1983, and then later with the uh, creation of the autonomous region, uh, there is there the provision pertaining to the Sharia. And now we have the uh, uh, framework agreement, uh, a provision of which speaks about uh, the necessity of uh, the uh, strengthening of the Sharia legal system. Now, speaking of the Sharia, we have to take note that first we will define Islam because Sharia is the legal system of Islam. Islam is oftentimes misunderstood. Islam is taken from two Arabic terms, Salama and Istaslama. These two terms means four things. First, it means release, freedom, and redemption from inner and outer evil. When you speak about Islam, you're speaking of redemption release and freedom from inner and outer evil. The second meaning is it means peace and security. Where, wherever Islam goes, there must be peace and security. However, this we do not find, not because of Islam, but because of some people who claims to be Muslims and yet they do not live with the teachings of uh, the religion of peace. Thirdly, Islam means order and harmony. When you speak of, of Islam, it speaks about uh, the creation of, of everything which was in order. Even in the case of the heavenly system, the Quran speaks about all of this created following a certain order, following an orbit. For example, in Surah to Yasin, there is there a verse which is, Wa kullun fi falaki yasbahun. Everything in the universe follow an orbit. It swims along an order set by Allah. And so therefore, that is the, one of the meanings of Islam. And finally, the, 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 the meaning of salam, salama and istaslama means uh, obedience, surrender, and uh, submission to the will of Allah. This is the common definition of Islam. Islam is a way of life that speaks about obedience, submission, and uh, surrender to the will of Allah. But that is only one fourth of the real meaning of the term Islam. The cornerstone of the belief in Islam is belief in the oneness of Allah. This is Tawheed. This is belief in the oneness of Allah. In the belief of Islam, Allah created everything but did not abandon His creation. He sustains His creation. And man is an instrument in the creative power of Allah. We are instruments in the creative power of God. 
Islam as a deen, as a as deen uh, refers to something that is complete. Islam as a deen refers to Islam as a complete way of life. Islam is not is not only confined to religious matters. It is a complete way of life. It is a distinct ideology. It is a religious faith. It is a mood of conduct. It is a political system. It is a code of law. It is an economic theory. It is an aesthetic value. This is Islam, complete, and, and, and governs every aspect of life. It governs all aspects of life at the individual level, at the family level, at the communal level, at the social or, or global level. For example, in the case of a person being governed by Islam, Islam believes that a person, in order to be complete, should be composed of three things. We have the physical aspect of the person, the spiritual aspect, and the intellectual aspect. In fact, if you look at the Quran, which is the basic source of the Sharia, the Quran speaks to the human mind. Every time the Quran speaks about the mysteries of creation, Allah will always say in the Quran, Afala Do you not think? Afala Do you not reflect? Because the Quran speaks to the human mind. In the eyes of Islam, the relationship between man and God is direct. If as a person, as a Muslim, you want to talk to Allah, you do it by praying. You pray and you directly talk to Allah. And Allah also directly, directly talks to you. And how is that done? You read the Quran, Allah is talking to you. Because the Quran is believed by Muslims as the word of Allah. And when you read the Quran, Allah is talking to you. And the Quran speaks directly to the human mind. It challenges the human mind. This is uh, to, to give you a, a, the perspective of Islam in a nutshell. Islam does not compartmentalize, differentiate, or distinguish between the spiritual and the mundane. It always puts together the spiritual and the mundane or the worldly. It puts together the religious and the secular. It puts together the moral and the legal. In Islam, what is legal must be moral. What is moral must be legal. You do not differentiate because there is no distinction there is, no, uh, uh, there is no compartmentalization between what is legal and what is moral. When a thing is proved to be legal, it is at the same time moral. When a thing is moral, it is at the same time legal. Secondly, Islam does not distinguish between the religious and the secular, between godliness and humanity. One of the discussions of Islam speaks about Rabbaniya, Godliness and insania. You look at Surah Al Fatiha, the opening chapter of the Quran. Even if, even if you pray alone, you read the Surah Al Fatiha, it is in the plural, not in the singular, because you are reminded of your humanity. The I is submerged in the we. After praising Allah, you say, Ihdina Surat al Mustaqim, show us the straight path. You are praying alone. Can you not say, show me the straight path? But you are, not, you are not allowed to do so. You have to say it in the plural because you are part of humanity. This is insania, humanity submerged within rabbaniya or godliness. And you look at other aspects of the deen, other aspects of religion. You look at fasting. You fast, but you are required to take care of others. Meaning, you can express your love of Allah by expressing your love to your fellow men. This is Islam, which is oftentimes misunderstood by other people. Now, Insania, on the other hand, speaks about our worldly life, politics, economics, and other aspects of life. Within this Insania, there is also the aspect of Rabbaniya in politics. Some people say, oh, you cannot be a Muslim while you, while you participate in government. That is wrong. You can be a government official and at the same time a very true Muslim. Because the Prophet said, Inna Allah yuhibu ahadukum ida amila amalan ayyutkina. Allah loves one of you who, who, when he does his work, he does it with excellence, he does it with perfection. Now, this is uh, the balance that we see in Islam. Now, going back to 
our discussion of Sharia, which is the legal system of Islam, there are two terms that, that need to be differentiated. We need to differentiate two terms, which are oftentimes translated as Islamic law. These are the terms Sharia and Fiqh. Two terms. But is Sharia, what is Sharia? Sharia is Islamic law. What is Fiqh? Fiqh is Islamic law or Islamic jurisprudence. But these two terms are different. Sometimes we say Sharia or Islamic law is dynamic. Sometimes we say Islamic law is fixed. It is because we have to distinguish between these two terms. First, the term Sharia. Sharia literal, li literally means a way, uh, a street, or an avenue, a boulevard. You go to a Muslim country, if the name of the street is Abdul Aziz, it is Ashari Abdul Aziz, meaning Abdul Aziz Avenue. Because it speaks about the way. Uh, it, it refers to the way to a watering place. That's the, that's the original term, the literal meaning of the Sharia. A way to a watering place. And it means when you go the way of Sharia, you are going to a place where you can quench your thirst. Your thirst for the truth. <coughs> Technically, Sharia means, or Sharia, uh, Sharia means, the totality of Allah's commandments to man. It, it, it is the totality of the commandments of Allah to man put together, you call that Sharia. Now, Sharia, if it is the totality of Allah's commandments to man, it speaks of something that comes from Allah. Therefore, it is divine. And because Sharia is divine, in the eyes of Muslims, in the thinking of Muslims, Sharia is perfect, it is fixed, it is, not, it is not alterable, it is fixed, it is eternal. But fiqh, on the other hand, was also translated as, as law. Literally means uh, fahm or understanding. Uh, for those who had, uh, and who had studied in the madrasa, fiqh is defined as al fiqh lugatan al fahm. Fiqh in language means to understand. So therefore, fiqh refers to the human understanding and human interpretation of the law. If it is human, it is not perfect. It is, it is dynamic. It is not fixed. And it is not eternal. So when you speak of faith, this refers to the interpretation of the law by the jurist, which is not as fixed as the Sharia, unlike the Sharia which is, which is fixed. So that is why we find in fact the differences of opinion of the jurist. Now, as a book of law, the Quran as a book of law, you find in the Quran 140 verses or ayat pertaining to devotional matters. Salah, zakat, prayers, uh, paying alms or zakat, fasting during the month of Ramadan, hajj, giving sadaqat, and kafarat, meaning how to, how to redeem in, in some acts that you do, and you do penit penitence, this is kafarat. There are, there are 70 verses pertaining to, uh, uh, pertaining to marriage, divorce, uh, inheritance, paternity, custody, maintenance, uh, bequests. 70 verses pertaining to commercial transactions, uh, sale, lease, loan, and mortgage. 30 verses pertaining to crime and punishment, and the uh, penalty in matters of murder, highway robbery, thief, <coughs> adultery, and slanderous accusation. 30 verses pertaining to justice, equality, evidence, consultation, and uh, the rights and duties of citizens, and 10 verses pertaining to economic matters. You find this in the Quran. But the Quran lays down very general terms in, this, in these matters. Just for example, we read volumes of books about international relations, but the Quran, only one verse. One verse in the Quran that speaks about international relations, but it covered all aspects of international relations. What is that verse? Ya ayuhan nasu inna khalaknakum min zakari wa unsa wa ja'alnakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allah yatkakum. O men, uh, O uh, uh, men, you are created from a man and a woman. A single man and a single woman. And out of this, we created nations and tribes. We have now nations and tribes all over the world. What is the purpose? Lita Arafu. One term, Lita Arafu. But this Lita Arafu has three sheets of meaning. 
لتعرفوا meaning from the term معروف in order to be good to each other you are made into different nations so that you can have diplomatic relationship be good to one another لتعرفوا so that you will know one another from the term عرفة so this is how the Quran lays down its rules and the Quran is the basic source of the Sharia now the second source of the Sharia is the Sunnah we, we, we are trying to summarize all of these things. The Sunnah, or the, uh, the Sunnah literally means the, the way of life of the Prophet, the practice of the Prophet. There are some people who say, the only source is the Quran, forget about the Sunnah, we cannot do that. Muslims cannot do that. Why? Because the Prophet is the human specimen of the Quranic character. One time Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, was asked, what is the character of the Prophet? What is the way of life of the Prophet? Uh, the answer of Aisha was, Khulukuhu al-Quran. The character of the Prophet is the Quran. Meaning the Prophet's way of life was the human interpretation. He, because he was the human specimen of the Quranic character. If you want to understand the Quran, you have to study the lifestyle of the Prophet. Because there you find the meaning. Or, or you understand the meaning of the Quran. So this is the Sunnah. When you speak of the Sunnah, you are speaking of three things. First, the statements of the Prophet, second, the actions of the Prophet, and third, the actions of others, of his companion, which he approved. So these are Sunnah Qawli, Sunnah Fa'li, Sunnah Taqriri. Uh, regarding the legality of, of a Sunnah, you have to take note that the Sunnah can be divided into two. We have Sunnah Tashri'i as Sunnah Ger Tashri'i, as a source of law. Sunnah that has legal effect and sunnah that has no legal effect. And what, what, what are these? The, the sunnah that has legal effects are of three kinds. First, sunnah that refers to the pronouncements of the prophet as a prophet of Allah, as, as a messenger of Allah. Whatever he says that is sunnah because they have legal effect. Second, all his pronouncements, decisions as kid of state that should be followed. Just like in... Uh, in, 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 in the decisions of, uh, of course, we have stare decisis, meaning the precedence of uh, a previous action of a court is followed by the, by the subsequent uh, court. Now, the third is his decisions as, as a judge. These are the aspects of the sunnah that has legal effect. So uh, uh, just to uh, wind up, I just want to... to, to, to give the idea of, of uh, the question of ishtihad. Later on, at the later part of uh, the development of Islamic law, there was the development of fiqh. When we speak of ishtihad, we are speaking of uh, interpreting the law, of giving an opinion pertaining to the law. Later on, this was, this was uh, uh, toned down into mujtahidin fil madhab, mujtahid or, or jurist on a particular school of law. Then, during our time, um, ijtihad is now mujtahid fil mas'ala, mean, muj, meaning uh, mujtahid or jurist on a particular aspect of the law. In fact, during our time, during our modern age, ijtihad could not be, I would believe, that ijtihad could not be exercised by only one person. There is need for uh, a collegiate giving of ijtihad or giving of opinion. There is, the, there is now uh, the need for all people of different expertise to come together and discuss matters pertaining to, to society and to, to things that, that, that affect society. Unlike in the, in, in the classical age of the, uh, of the golden age of Islam, where we have philosophers who are also jurists, and we are also musicians, and we are also scientists. Ibn Rushd, for example, Al-Farabi, uh, 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 Al-Ghazali, you look at all those people in the past, they were musicians, they were scientists, they were philosophers, they were mystics, they were jurists. Put in one. But nowadays, we cannot find people like them. And so therefore, what we can do now, what Muslims can do now is put together the minds of different people in order to give an opinion pertaining to certain matters. I think uh, that, we, that would be enough for uh, the first part of the program. Thank you for... Uh, Give him your time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.